Hello, hello. Welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict Breaking News. What's going on, Roz? Well, yesterday, Biden gave Putin a warning, and he said, we will take strong action uh, <laughs> if, if you invade the democratic country of Ukraine. Wow. Well, that's interesting. This is why we wanted to talk to you to bring you on an update regarding this information. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let me uh, express our thanks to World Peace. World Peace, thank you very much for your super sticker. We appreciate it a lot. So but just to get back to the topic here, to understand what's going on as to why the United States all of a sudden come in with that posture of, we're warning you, we're going to impose sanctions. As, as a matter of fact, that's the, the Treasury Secretary already <laughs> working on some mechanism to prevent Russia from access to the SWIFT system. Does idiocy reign supreme in Washington? Yeah, to them it becomes like the norm. To have the arrogant position to tell Vladimir Putin that you can't do anything, we get to do everything, doesn't matter how irrational, how immoral, how crazy it is, you just have to put up with it. Exactly. And this is all has to do with uh, uh, has to do with uh, you know the situation in Ukraine. I'm sure you are aware of it. Uh, Ukraine Ukraine has moved about uh, 147 or 125 thousand troops to the border. Massive uh, buildup. But Russia moved 450. <laughs> so that's the last numbers that I saw. So it tells you right there uh, that of course the question is what the West the West is saying is that Russia is going to invade Ukraine. You know, that's the narrative that has been sold. And this is why the U.S. is pushing Ukraine to join NATO. But do we understand the red line for Russia? They will not allow that. You know, with NATO comes how many offensive nuclear weapons? Some outrageous number. 6,000? <laughs> yeah, 6,000 in total. And they have about, I think, 2,000 in strategic nuclear war. So there is directly on the Russian border. Mm -hmm. And Russia has, has shown no inclination to move westward and take Europe and do anything with it but cooperate. And this is where the arguments of the uh, 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 Russia is that the idea of because what happened after the fall of the Soviet Union, just, just background history here briefly, uh, and I wrote a book about uh, Russia, but I addressed this issue in great detail, even for Scandinavian countries like Sweden and Finland and Norway, what all this means. So uh, the bottom line is that before the fall of the Soviet Union, we promised uh, at that time, the promise was given to Mikhail Gorbachev that uh, he had assurances that we will not expand eastward, okay? In his, uh, back then, the Secretary of State, uh, James Baker, mm -hmm. former Secretary of State, in his famous speech at the, at the uh, uh, re regarding the U.S.-Soviet uh, uh, relations at the time, we promised not to expand eastward. We went back on our word. But Russia did not. Did not. So now we're dealing with <clears throat> differences. Uh, you know, the Soviet Union is gone some three decades ago. And even Putin denounced Soviet, it, the Soviet system. Yeah, exactly. So the idea of right now uh, as to the West, uh, the West wanting Ukraine to be part of NATO, but that doesn't make any sense because once you're going to move the assets of NATO into Ukraine, Russia has a big concern and strategic one and rightly so. It has to do with access to water because yeah. it has only for its naval fleet, that's the only access to the waters they have. Well, if you choke that, you know, I do not foresee Russia will ever, ever allow that. They will use nuclear weapon to protect that access. Second question that we need to ask is, what are we concerned about Ukraine for? Why are we going to be sending U.S. soldiers to die for some interest of Ukraine? What does Ukraine give us? Zero. Yeah. So, but this will give you an idea about the influence of the lobbyists on behalf of Ukraine. Ukraine spends a lot of money advocating for uh, uh, lobbyists in the U.S. to push the U.S. governments regarding this is what you hear this narrative. Well, let me ask a provocative question. Sure. Where does the Ukraine get that money? From yeah. the United States government. Yeah. 
Which is and so taking American dollars, taxpayer dollars, and sending foreigners to the United States to influence, bribe, lobby. Whatever that is, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. You're right. So I don't see in a logical <clears throat> argument uh, how come when Russia does it, oh, they are the bad enemies. How would we feel, we Americans, if China or Russia establish something near the, the coast of Florida? You mean like Cuba? Yeah. Well, or, we, or up something near Canada. Well, we tried that about 1960. Oh, what was 61 or 62? 64. 60. Oh, 61. 61. The, the Cuban right. Missile Crisis. Yeah, 61. And amazingly, Kennedy and who was the Khrushchev? Khrushchev came to a terms on it. Yeah. And refused to have a war. Exactly. And I understand at that time that the warmongers were just as heavy to let's go get Russia, yeah. let's go get the Soviet Union. But did we know the background as what to what led to that in the first place? Oh, Turkey well, missiles in Turkey. Yeah, most Americans do not know that Soviet Union's <coughs> excuse me, Soviet Union's reaction back then, or action rather, was a reaction to the US putting missiles in Turkey geared towards the Soviet Union. So what do you expect? In an off moment, Kennedy even said, you mean we got missiles in Turkey? Yeah, he didn't know. He didn't even know. <laughs> so, and this is now where that argument as to, you know, why are we ratcheting up these tensions about uh, uh, Russia is going to invade Ukraine? And yeah, I can see that Russia doing that if we cross the line with them. And second, Putin's not going to allow it. No. If you look at the history of Russia, okay, this will be the first time ever if we cross that line, that Russia will use the nukes that can go back a thousand years in the history of Russia, because that's how important access to that water is to them. That's their access to the world when it comes down to waters. You block that, you choke that, it's not going to happen. You take a look at the irrationality, what's going on in Washington, D.C. So there's nothing to gain, everything to lose, but let's do it anyway. And, and that is where these defense contractors are pushing this narrative as far as, you know what, let's let just uh, aggravate more situations. And the thing is the miscalculation could lead to some far devastating uh, uh, outcome into all this. You know, something to keep in mind is the psychological process of what's the best predictor for future behavior? Hmm. Past, Past behavior. behaviors. So let's look at the behavior of the United States concerning Russia and how irrational it's been. Guess what it's going to continue to be? But Irrational. Irrational, you're right. And and it seems to be a whole movement that says we're not even afraid of a nuclear uh, interaction with the Russia. Yeah. I mean, how yeah, crazy is that? It is crazy. And because that makes you now wonder and question as to <clears throat> those advising the president, president of the United States, as to are they giving him their really the, the right advice or not? I have to question who he surrounded himself with. People who are advising this kind of behavior. Yeah. Clearly, don't even, don't belong in in government. No, nah, no, nah, they shouldn't. They shouldn't because that's a risk for us all. Exactly. You know, a nuclear war with Russia is the end. So they better get it and understand uh, those dynamics. What I also wanted to touch on briefly here is the idea of I don't know if you get a chance to uh, see the briefing uh, that was released by the White House. I had a chance to see it, but I also saw the picture of the virtual car because they show the screens well what they showed was vladimir putin by himself and they showed biden surrounded by four aides sitting <laughs> in the office you know? what's even more uh, disturbing in my opinion is that after the call president biden didn't come forward and state what well, what took place he was the uh, national security advisor speaking on his behalf he was the speaker uh, of the, the uh, spokesperson for the Secretary of State. So, in other words, where is the president into all this? Why didn't he come forward and state that? We suspect the worst. Yeah. Or, or do we? can we say we know the worst? Uh, we'll go with the latter. Okay. Yeah. So, my question is, does he have earphones and plugs in his ears telling him what to say? It sure looks like it. Possibly. He's got something yeah. going on. So... It was just very, very, uh, to, to me, it was like a signal of how uh, Russia is approaching this when you got Vladimir Putin by himself, then no aids, nothing, and no no notes, nothing. He was just, so. Uh, that you just, know, as, as we've done an analysis of him, because yeah. we, we're ongoing researching him yeah. for a program we're going to do on 
uh, linguistically what he's up to. Mm -hmm. He looks remarkably well-informed. Yeah. He looks remarkably confident. Here's a man who's in control of things yeah. and on top of what's really going on internationally. Then exactly. we compare him to Biden. Yeah. No comparison. Not at all. So. And he's completely congruent about, because we've broken down what's congruent means, he means what he says. Exactly. He appears to be congruent with, you cross the red, you cross this red line and hell's going to break loose. Yeah. And we're telling you in advance, it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, he's not going to want to, uh, I mean, no leader <laughs> would want his border, his Western side of the country be occupied by NATO members. You know, he's not going to allow that, nor any other. If there were someone else beside, they're not going to allow that because to them, that's a survival. That's existential. Right. They're not going to do that. So second thing is what we don't understand is the idea of the U.S. Posing, uh, imposing sanctions. Now, believe it or not, even the Nord Stream 2 came up in a conversation, you know, and what I found very disturbing is that the U.S. now is going to sanction Russia and oh, who's going to be punished for that? It's Western Europe. <laughs> Germany is not going to get gas. They're know? going to be cold this winter. Exactly. And why would you want to do that in the middle of December? <laughs> that just doesn't make sense. Russia is not interested in, for example, invading Brussels or Belgium. They don't care for that. You know, what Russia wants to make sure, because now Putin is asking legal assurances, because the West went back on its word after the fall of the Soviet Union. The best predictor of future behavior is past, past behavior. behavior. So now he's saying to the West, put in a writing, legally speaking, because he can't trust the West. And how should he? <laughs> well, can anybody? Well, because how we go back and forth on, on stuff. So, so this is basically what we wanted to share with you is to understand, you know, of where this is headed. Uh, yeah, Russia could react very, very aggressively if the moment that, uh, personally, I don't foresee Ukraine joining NATO. First of all, uh, uh, Ukraine doesn't have the capabilities. There are certain standards to meet uh, requirements for NATO. Second, what is NATO doing if it was established only for one sole purpose to defeat the Soviet Union? What well, the Soviet Union is gone 30 years ago. So now what are we having NATO for? You know, you and I have talked about it before. What was President Trump's position on NATO? Why is it here? Why does this continue to exist? Yeah, and, and you give him credit for, you know, you give credit when credit is due. Exactly. He asked the questions that some in Washington didn't want to ask or didn't want to hear or didn't want to talk about what is the purpose of NATO you know for you and I as a citizens we have no influence in politics but we understand the dynamics we understand that there's no benefit to the people of Europe and there's no benefit to the people in the United States now there is benefit to the oligarchs and the power elite and the people who make money on war yeah okay we, there is a subset of people who really do benefit big time from this unless there's a nuclear exchange exactly it equals humanity you're absolutely correct. Doesn't matter what economic or power position you're in, you're gone. Yeah, and this is where my concern is. I remember tweeted about something like this has to do with the concern that I truly have because I, I kind of think and see the the trends of how things are evolving. You know, my big concern is this miscalculation. They're gonna be pushing Russia to the corner, and once you corner the bear, you have no idea how the bear is gonna react. You know, it's just to me like. Why are you playing with fire? Why are you rushing up these tensions that could backfire? Especially when you're looking at a total of approximately 500,000 military personnel on both sides of this thing. Yeah. And poised for armed conflict. Exactly. And the same argument was made in the case of Northern Europe. And this is why, uh, for, for example, you get, uh, 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 like, for example, uh, Sweden and Finland, they decided not to, uh, you know, NATO, it's what it is, and those Nordic states where they are, and kind of Russia made it clear with, uh, I detail this stuff in the book, in, in highlighting how when uh, it was the war uh, between Russia and Georgia at the time, mm. and and the former president, uh, Mikhail Shakashvili, at the time said, whoa, whoa now Russia is going to invade Finland, and, which is nonsense. I mean, it was pathetic for him to even say that. You know, because uh, basically what it was, he couldn't he, he couldn't believe that Russia ran over him in three days <laughs> of his forces. That's how long it took them. Three yeah, days. three days. So I remember. Over, yeah. Long so, ago, but three days. Exactly. So to him, it was 
and he was expecting uh, he uh, Shakashvili was expecting that the West is going to come to his rescue. Uh uh they didn't because they know same concept for Ukraine. No matter what you hear, this rhetoric and all this stuff, the West understand they are not going to risk a nuclear war with Russia over Ukraine, and unless the unless insane forces have a say in what's going on. And we know that there's some real insanity going on here. Yeah. And for us Americans, we'll be asking, you know, what what are we what are our interests in Ukraine? What are we even concerned about all this when we get our own issues right here? We got our own problem here. If you are to because I heard the Jack Sullivan, the uh, national security advisor, his statement and I quote here use the term territorial integrity of Ukraine. I was like, hold on a second, hold on a second. How ironic that you are talking about inte uh, territorial integrity when we got our own issues on the border right here. You know, I heard an estimate that there are between 15 and 30 million illegal people in this country. I, yeah. And I, it, it, the figures are so staggering. I didn't, don't know what it, it warped in my brain. And I couldn't remember the exact detail of what number yeah. it was. It was outrageously big. Yeah. It was just the arguments, you know, it doesn't hold. And when you start to hear this, this nonsense, because there's a nonsense stuff coming out of those officials from the White House, you know, you don't speak on my behalf because you, you, you don't know what the heck you're talking about in the sense of saying, oh, Ukraine, ter Ukraine, territory integrity. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are you telling the American people the truth? That if we run into a hot war with Russia, it's over. And for what? What is our interest in Ukraine to begin with? Let's define that for the American people to understand where their tax money is spent on. So, you know, I told you the other day in one of our shows that I was talking to a Russian friend of mine. Yeah. He's really a close friend. And she said, Ukraine has the most corrupt government in Europe and maybe the most corrupt government in the world in terms of it. the people in charge take all the money and do whatever they want with it. Wow. That's our ally. Exactly. And that was and that, that's where the issue is. This is why we wanted to address this one, because in light of the phone call yesterday uh, between President Putin and President Biden, uh, there are even though the conversation took about two hours, they addressed some other issues, whatever. But, you know, it was no of substance regarding this particular issue, you know. But for the media here in the U.S. to come out and state U.S. president warned the Russian president about, you know, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Do you think that the Russians are going to be scared of that? When their survival is at stake here, you're talking about moving NATO troops closer to their Western border. They're not going to allow it. And second, what makes us think that they're going to trust what the Americans are saying? They don't. They, don't. they can't. No, Past not behavior at all. is the best predictor of... And that's what we've got right now. Exactly. Well, this is brings me back to what happened back in 1991 when former Secretary James Baker spoke in the Magnificent St. Catherine Hall at the Kremlin, saying that Western leaders contemplated, and I quote, no extension of NATO's jurisdiction to forces of NATO one inch to the east, end of quote. Interestingly, uh, the now declassified uh, negotiations papers, because they have been documents rather, show that the former Soviet president at that time, Mikhail uh, uh, Gorbachev, agreed to NATO's member for a new unified Germany. He made it quite clear that any extension, I quote, any extension of the zone of NATO is unacceptable. So what makes us think that Putin is going to agree to could yeah. any American president stand up to the powers that be to stop this? Could any, in your memory? No. No, because American president uh, has no power. Are you, familiar, what are you familiar with the concept of a, an empty suit? No. Well, what it means is there's supposed to be a person in there, mm -hmm. but they're so vacuous, they're so weak, they're so nobody that they call them an empty suit. Now, we're not naming anybody here. I see your point. Yeah. You got a point there. And it's indeed, this is why uh, we wanted to address this. But again, the big concern is the idea of, uh, you know, Russia will react because if that red line is crossed, just expect the Russians to, you know, they're not going to move 450,000 troops for nothing. That's a massive amount of troops. Well, they got a large number. So, I mean, literally, if they want to take it over Ukraine, they can do it in no time. Oh, yeah. I don't foresee them doing this, but also because... 
What the West is not disclosing is that Ukraine has moved these troops also to the Donbas area, to the where the 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 uh, ethnic groups there that they want to be associated with Russia. Oh, yeah. So if you look at it, you know, because we're hearing only one side of the argument. How about we hear the other side? That maybe Russia is there to defend the locals there that they are associated with Russia. So and, and we're not defending Russia here. We're just providing the arguments and let you decide for yourself. So, but my big concern is that a miscalculation is going to lead to some consequences that we can't stop. And also for the idea that the United States come in with that superiority of attitude saying, we're going to sanction you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. If you behave this way, that way, well, who the heck are you to be telling other countries what to do? That era is gone. More and more examples of boomerang arrows. Yeah, absolutely correct. So, so uh, we hope you find this information useful. That's why we wanted to share it with you. Uh, we keep in, uh, I'm personally, and this is my domain per se, I'm keeping an eye on to this, uh, where these talks are headed. And, uh, uh, but it's only, I'm not surprised at the same time, because I did mention this in my last book, these yeah. details and all this. So, but I'm always interested in following up what's going with this. Uh, remember to subscribe if you have not done so. Uh, remember to check our uh, website at geopoliticsinconflict.com. That's where we offer our membership uh, to see because we offer uh, some sort of uh, presentations, live presentations, Q&As for our members only. So. Uncensored. Uncensored. That is the whole reason why we have that. Uh, so I'm sure our viewers know this by now. So also remember to join us on Friday for live stream. Uh, at 1100 hours and also we're gonna probably do another live stream tomorrow elizabeth will will post that stuff for you remember to follow us on twitter me at david wadaru and elizabeth as alchemy of e and also uh, on instagram and tiktok okay we hope you find this uh, information very useful till next time stay informed bye-bye